Hello everyone. Let's see you again. Hey, it's Ken Lauer. Thank you for joining us. This is Tuesday's 11 a.m. Feng Shui Q&A Live. So here's an opportunity for everyone to jump in, get your questions answered, and have some fun along the way. So let me do a little bit of housekeeping for just a second. Get everybody set up. So one of the things that, that people have asked about or one of the common questions and uh, regarding feng shui is um, an opportunity for pictures and photos. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a little bit of that. Any time along the way, feel free to join in so that uh, I know that you're here and joining. And also at the same time that uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment or post photos or anything like that. So we're going to have some fun here. So one of the questions that I get or one of the things that I see when I'm working with my clients is around stickers, photos, and taping things to the walls. So when you look throughout your space, one of the signs that, of meaning that signs that things aren't going well, or that you're just stuck and not satisfied or not happy or just not satisfied with the current levels of progress, what we can begin to do is certain things we start to see. So one of the things that we start to see is around the space where people start sticking things, taping things, things that are not temporary are not permanent. So a lot of times people have post-it notes or they start tucking little photos into other framed photos and things like that. So what you want to be aware of is making sure that let's see is making sure that you're not doing things that devalue your space. Hello, Yvonne from Alabama. Love it. So glad that you're here. Awesome that you're a top fan. So excited. So feel free to answer, uh, ask any questions or submit any photos and I'll try to get to them. So one of the things that you want to look at is making sure that you're not devaluing your space. So a lot of times people have spent you know, a good amount of time and money and energy into making their space look like a home. And then over time, things start to I can all the way from Cyprus, Cupris, Cyprus. Okay, that's what I thought. Awesome. So glad that you're here. Love it. So you want you want to make sure that when you do something, you do it with an intention in your space or your home and that you're not doing it of, hey, somebody gave me something, you know, example. Oh, I got this. Let's just pretend that this is a picture or something like that. Oh, I have this, so let me tuck it in this picture, you know, in this back here, and then it'll just sit there. And what happens is, hi, Ruthann, um, then it just lives there. And so over time, you don't necessarily see it, but what happens is your subconscious does. And then all of a sudden, then you say, oh, well, I have this other piece, and then let me hang a postcard or something like that. Hi, Jan, how are you? Good morning to you. So glad that you're here. And again, Ruthann and Jan, I got all the top fans here. I love this. This is great. So take a look at your own space in your own home and verify if you have anything just that you've just placed there but is temporary or if you've stuck something with masking tape or some type of scotch tape or something like that. And a lot of times is if you want a picture or something like that, great. Oh, thanks for all the likes and the hearts, guys. Appreciate that. Um... If you're going to want to use it there on a full-time basis, great. Then get a picture frame or um, have an intention with it. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Thanks for being here. So take a look at your own space and understand. You know, I had a client a, a while back and started putting Post-it notes everywhere. In the mirrors, in the bathroom, even had them on the ceilings in the bedroom. And all of a sudden, I was like, what are you doing? Oh, well, motivation and inspiration... But a lot of times that just means that you're operating from fear, self-doubt, and anxiety. And so you're trying to find all these external things to get you pumped up and excited. But the reality is it's all draining. And so my suggestion was let's start from scratch, take them all down. Next thing you know, got into a relationship and things really started to take off for this person. So, Melinda, 
Thank you so much for being here. The missing wealth corner in my house. So when we look at feng shui, there's something called the bagua. And the bagua is basically a map broken up into different sections. So there are three different rows with three different um, columns. And so each area is considered to be a certain, represent a certain area of your life. So, so what she's saying is that the wealth corner, which from feng shui, we're looking at, if you're standing at the front door and you're looking over the floor plan, you're looking at the back left corner and she's saying that she's missing that. And then she's also saying the top floor has a missing corner too. So here's the first thing that you need to think about. Focus on, hey JP, JP, awesome. So glad that you could join. I actually just got off the phone with JP. She is taking massive action over there at her place. It is so good to, to see when we make suggestions and that people follow through. And what she was saying was, oh, I haven't feel, I felt like I haven't been doing enough. In the meantime, she's doing a lot, and then all of a sudden, things are starting, starting to take off. Her husband's business is doing well. So, awesome job, JP. Love it. So, so glad that you're here, and it was great to talk to you today. So, with the wealth corner, if you're missing a wealth corner in your house, first of all, focus on what you can change and not on what you can't. Erica, so glad that you're here again. Thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome, JP. Oh, so glad that you're enjoying this. So at any time, guys, feel free to post photos and stuff. I know after this session, a lot of times people all of a sudden start posting photos and things like that. But this is the forum for all those questions that come up during the week and including a lot of the photos that I suggest or post on Facebook. And people are like, hey, what's your opinion? Those we can discuss some of those as well. So back to the wealth corner and missing the wealth corner. So focus on what you can and and not on what you can't or what you can control and not on what you can't control. Josette, awesome. Hi, Josette. Thanks again for all the likes and the loves, guys. All the thumbs up. I appreciate it, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So focus on what you can change and not on what you can't. Now, back to the question of the missing wealth corner, you're not going to rebuild the home. You're more than likely not going to do massive construction. The challenge is that's one piece of the story. So it it doesn't mean that's the end all be all. It just means that it's one piece of the story. Now, usually when you have something like a missing wealth corner, it shows up in other areas as well. Again, every home tells a theme or a story. Josette's saying, hey, trying to post images, clear door window. So you should be able to just post those in the comments uh, as well. So. With the wealth corner and missing a wealth corner, so that's one piece of the puzzle. But any space, there's usually uh, 12 to 15 different things that are all telling the same thing around money challenges, blockages of opportunities, or things like that. So look around your space. Every client that I've ever worked with, they have some ideas of what they could do. Or they're thinking about certain things, but they haven't taken action. So the first step is look around your own place and start to identify and figure out What is it that you can actually do or you're aware of, but you're not taking action on? The other thing is the next step for doing it yourself is start to take photos, you know, get out, get out your phone, you know, take out and take a photo. And so once you start to take a photo, then all of a sudden, then you start to judge and you start to look at your space in a completely different way. Then all of a sudden, usually then the emotions come in, you know, guilty, shame, embarrassment, all these things. And a lot of times with that is, oh, I can't believe I let it get so bad or, oh, I know that that these things are, that can be done. So take a photo of your space and start to look at it from a different perspective. Start to change the story and then figure out out of all the stuff you could do, what's the next simple win that you can get? What is the next simple thing? And for me, it's not just the wealth corner. Again, there's 12 to 15 things that usually all tell the same story about challenges with money and things like that. So start on the outside of the space or home. If it's an apartment, then you start at the front door and look at and see a couple different things. Are the shrubs touching, um, you know, the walls? Like with JP's house, if you don't mind, JP, I'd just like to share a little bit. I'm not going to get too detailed, but with JP's house, the front door, there were these very tall bushes and it starts to almost create like a, like a, 
you know, protection almost, but to the point where your social life and things start to implode. And so a lot of times people's shrubbery and things like that are overgrown. JP, awesome. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're not touching the walls or things like that. And the, the plantings are not starting to cover the entrances or the windows. A lot of times when people come to me, you know, there's shrubbery that are blocking complete windows and they're exhausted. They don't feel like they're doing anything. Uh, they don't feel like they want to do anything, even though that they have some big goals. So start on the outside, because again, if the chi or the energy or the opportunities doesn't come inside, it doesn't matter much what you do. So start with the outside and then your entryway. For, I go into detail a little more in my free feng shui book. So you can visit my website at Ken Lauer, K-E-N-L-A-U-H-E-R.com. And then there's a link on the, in the navigation for free ebook. And that's where I go into a little more detail about how do you start to feng shui your entrance and things like that. So don't worry so much that your wealth corner is missing. Focus again on what you can do and what you can change. Now, let me go back up here and see what other questions. So hopefully that uh, helps you understand, Melinda, about what you can do to start getting in action and moving things forward. So one question is, how to attract a new life partner? So, you know, majority of my clients are female. I would say probably over 90% are female. And so what I have noticed with women and men, men are not as similar as women in this category, but a lot of times whether the in, uh, they were in a relationship and it ended, good, bad, or other, a lot of times it's a great decision to move on from a relationship. Wonderful. The challenge is it still disrupts your chi and your energy, completely scatters your energy. If I'm lucky, I get to work with a person right before, right during, or right after. On average, it takes five to six years for a woman to raise her hand again and be like, hey, I want to get back to being me and I want to start living my life and start having fun and doing these things and even considering a relationship. Now, that's on average. Sometimes it's a little shorter, um, things like that. So one of the things is the recipe is simple for attracting a life partner. All you have to do is raise your vibration and your frequency. Like, that's it. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can do that, but that's the recipe. That's what I'm always trying to get to for one of my clients. So it's not a question of if you're going to get a new partner. The question is when and then attracting the partner that's perfect for you. So what you have to do, you know, I've told this analogy in the past is, you know, when you're getting ready to board an airplane, they tell you, hey, if the cabin pressure were to drop, put your own oxygen mask on first before you take care of your partner or anybody else. What they don't tell you is you might have 30 seconds uh, before you black out. If people told you that, then you would understand the intensity that which you need to put your own oxygen mask on first. But a lot of times we're always taking care of everybody else. So what happens is all of a sudden you're trying to help somebody else and then all of a sudden you're starting to go black yourself. So now not only can you not help anybody else, but you're a liability because now someone also has to help you. So the goal is you have to put your oxygen mask on first so you can be a better service to others second. So that way you have increased capacity, capabilities, and things like that. So same thing with attracting a new life partner. You have to raise your vibration and frequency. Now this is where it gets interesting. When you raise, you start to raise your vibration and your frequency. It's like ringing the dinner bell. Because all the exes and everybody that you've known all come out of the woodwork saying, hey, thinking about you, this, that, and the other. The attention and the attraction is nice. And it makes you feel good. But you have to view it as a milestone. And what I mean by that is you have to view it as just a road sign that says, hey, it's working. Whatever I'm doing is working and it's improving my capacity, my capabilities, my vibration, my frequency. And you have to be very clear about is this the relationship that I want to attract or is this the relationship that I actually want to be in? Because all too often we bring in the X or something like that. We get um, you know, distracted and disrupted. And it's only a matter of time where you're like, oh, right, this is why we're not together. In the meantime, it's been weeks, months, or years, and then all of a sudden, then you're back starting from scratch. 
if you can view that as truly a milestone or a road uh, signpost and just say, hey, it just means I'm moving forward, then you will be much better off and then you can be focused on what you really want to attract. And then usually it can happen very quickly. So Vasiliki, pardon me, uh, hopefully that kind of helps you start to understand. So for me, for helping a person find a, attract a new life partner, I'm looking at their subconscious, that 86 to 88% of their brain that they're not necessarily aware of and how that's being reflected within their own home space. I want to see, there we go, the Medicine Buddha there in the background, giving us a little extra mojo. So the question, uh, Josette says, uh, so the question here is, should it be covered or left alone? So give me one second, Josette, because I know that you, Lupe, how are you? So glad that you're here. Let me pull up the, some of the comments. All of a sudden I'm not seeing the photos. Ruthann, thanks for helping Brenda. All right, so let me just restart that. Okay, and then, apology guys, I just wanna make sure that if you're submitting photos that I can actually see them and engage with them. Okay, uh, let's do this one with Ruthann. So Ruthann says, wealth corner in my living room just freshly painted it, removed a solid circle plate and put a mirror instead. What am I missing? So again, you know, when we start to look at these things from the wealth corner perspective, people get so fixated on the wealth corner. And so, again, you have to look at the whole map, the whole area of your space. It's not one or two things. A lot of times when people mess with their wealth corner, they're feeling good and they get a little bit of energy. But again, they never quite get the full transformation because there's 12 to 15 things that are all leaking massive energy. So right now we're looking at Ruth Ann's picture. And so she changed some things around. She has a little mirror. Um, stuff like that. And she added a plant, which is great. So for me, I like to add greenery for the mantle. All too often, people default to candles. For me, I don't like to add candles because it just strengthens the, the fire element from the fireplace and it makes it feel really dry. And you, the reality is most of the time people don't burn the candles anyways. And so it becomes decoration. In my opinion, it becomes, you know, just a dust magnet. So I think you're off to a good start here. You have some decoration the mirror ideally is really uh, is a little small you want to be able to see when you have your head mirrors are one of the easiest ways there are two things that you can do to change your space to make your space feel like a home adding living plants and adding mirrors so living plants are very simple and easy they're very cost effective they create a warmth a comfort and a lot of times most often most people don't have living plants or they had them in the past and they died and now they just don't have any. And so that represents their energy and their opportunities are just drying up. And so they're feeling drained. So this is a really good start. Now, ideally, I would have the, a, mirror, a bigger mirror here. And I would probably add some more plants because what she's showing here is a fireplace and it has a corner, kind of a corner unit. So the fireplace is tucked in the corner. So there's a lot of voided space. So I would put a little, some little small greenery plant um, there. So give me a second. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is fun. So let me just go over here. So this is, this is a fake succulent plant. So I just bought this at a store and then it's in my office. So, you know, I had a living one and then it died. So I'm like, okay, well, let me at least add this here. So something small like this. And again, you know, there's my head. I don't have that big of a head. So it's not all that big, but it adds a little bit of greenery and that feeling. So you can, on the sides, you can always accent with the green feeling, um, but I would add more greenery and make it more abundant and lush. But I think this, you're definitely off to the right start. So well done for that. 
Okay. Let's see. Nadine, welcome. We have a business and make good money, but once all costs are covered, I have nothing left. Please help. So, you know, there, with a business, there are a couple different things. You know, there are really a couple different ways to grow a business. You increase the number of visitors. You increase the how many of those you convert, and you increase the frequency of sales, and then you increase the average dollar amount. That's it. That's four ways to grow a business. If you change any of one of those, just the slightest, you'll exponentially grow your income or your revenues. So, you know, the challenge is that you're in a place where you have a business and it's, it, it's, it's a going along, but you're not profitable. I have one of my clients is a lawyer and she's really awesome. But when she came to me, she was doing 100 hours a week, hadn't been able to pay herself since 2016 and had to move in with family and all these other things. Within 80 days, she exponentially grew her firm's income, reduced the number of hours from 100 hours a week in half to 50 hours a week. She met a man who she believes is the one, and she bought a new home. All those things happen very quickly. And it wasn't if-then statements. When this happens, then that can happen. No, it all happened simultaneously. So you have to start to look at, and a lot of times, when we're in a business, especially as entrepreneurs or business owners, we're operating from a vacuum, meaning that we're, we just know what we need to do, and so we're doing it. But a lot of times you hit a certain plateau and you don't know how to grow or you don't, need to, you don't know how to change perspective or things like that. And so a lot of times you need to bring in somebody to help you get a new perspective. Now, a lot of times with business owners, JP's on the call, you know, her husband's business all of a sudden is starting to grow because we change the energy and the vibration and the frequency of the home. So that dramatically helps because that's how you go out in the world and you make your money and you bring it back and you nourish yourself. So a couple different things. Look at your house. Look at the space. And it doesn't matter the cost of your house or the dollar amount or things like that. Just look around and see, are there things that are blocked? Are there things or areas that are cluttered? Or, and it's not cluttered. It's, it's just blocking you. Or are there things around that, that don't bring you happiness because you've got them from somebody else and you keep every time you look at them, things like that. So you want to start to look at your space differently. You know, obviously, as a feng shui consultant, you would, you know, we would work together and, and I would help you. So that would be something to consider. You know, one of the things that I've mentioned on the last call is a program that I'm going to be rolling out at the beginning of August. And what it's going to be is a group coaching opportunity where we're going to go live three times a week where every week we have a challenge, every week we have a check-in and hot seats, and then every at the end of every week, then we have accountability. What'd you do, where'd you get to, and where you're at? And literally, this is like a, such a no-brainer. And people have been commenting of like, you got to raise the prices. But I wanted to make it available because a lot of my clients and people here and, and you watching this want the access and want the information because you know what's possible, but you're just, you just need a little assistance. And so that program is going to be literally $19.97 per month. Like, that's it. And we're going to get on here three times a week and help you get moving forward. So that would be a great opportunity for you. I'm going to be sending out emails and promotions later. Um, let's see. Wealth Corner in my living room. Oh, that's Ruth Ann. So I'm just scrolling here to try to look at some of the comments. Thanks so much for all the thumbs up, the likes, the loves. Lupe, Nadine, okay. Just looking for questions or things like that. Linda says, that's very good. JP, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Awesome. So let me refresh here and see if we have any other uh, questions or photos because this is the opportunity for you guys to get these answered. Now, for some reason, I can't go back. And I can't go back and see all the, all the amazing comments. Okay. So if you have a question or a comment, Feel free to
to answer them. Oh, Brenda, Brenda did post a photo. So I'm trying to pull that up. Oh, all right. Well, at least here's a photo. Here's a photo Josette just posted. And this one, let's see. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. So here we are with a photo that Josette just, just showed. Um, so, you know, we look at the entryway. The entryway is clean, clear. One of the things that we'd want to look at as the front door and is the chi or the energy uh, working. And so, but right now it's clean and clear. Everything seems good. There looks like there's a door stop there. Um, and then you get to the top of the steps and then we have these things up here. So one of the things I would be asking, and I can't quite tell, you can, I can't tell if that's quite, if that's a religious item or an icon or what that might be right now it's you know your shoes are storing it but there's opportunities for to upgrade to change this you know and then you also have here you have this table or something that jets out so the question is would you really need that um, and is there an opportunity here to put some living plants or something like that in that space right now it seems again it seems very dry it seems like it's nice and it looks good. There's also, it looks like there's a mirror above that, which is nice, but I would add simple living plant to start to make your space feel like a home. And again, that extra table, if you're using that, great, but it probably is not necessary because over time, people have the theory of, if I have a space, let me fill it with something. Karen asks, where is the wealth corner of the home? So from the way that I work, look at it, a lot of times anymore, when I'm working with a client and JP can comment on this, I'm not talking in terms of feng shui. I'm not talking in the details or you know, using feng shui language. I'm using very common sense terms. Do this, do that, this, that, and the other. So, oh, Josette says for that box uh, that was on that area, that's for the keys, the keys in the wallet. Okay, so that's fine, but you have an opportunity to really dress that up and to change the way you experience that as you come in. Um, so with the wealth corner, you know, you want to have it as a guideline because, again, it helps to start to tell the story. So I use it, the wealth corner in these areas of the Bagua, to start to identify it, but it's not the end-all, be-all because, again, there's a big, long string of items or holes within a space. So to understand it, you can, again, you can download my ebook at kenlauer.com and I will offer you to download that for free. It's a 98 page ebook on how to do that. Um, and it shows the Bagua map and all that. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to stand at the front door, the front door of your space or your apartment or your home. And then in the back left corner of your floor plan, that's considered the wealth area, the back right, the relationship, and so on. So what you want to look at is the floor plan overall and see what's happening in the back of the corner. You can also look at the lot. A lot of times people have shrubbery that's dead or dried or not doing well or a shed that's falling down or something like that. And then you can also do the same thing in the bedroom. In the bedroom, you're standing at your bedroom door looking in. And then in the back left corner is your wealth corner. So take a look and see what is in there. And then what is that story starting to tell? Is it filled with shoes? Is it filled with just stuff? Or is it abundant? Or is it a nice flourishing plant? And this will start to tell the story and start to help you peek behind the curtain to see what's going on. Um, Josette says, thanks. Oh, you're awesome. Does the window have to be covered? Well, not necessarily in this space. I, I might not because with a window or a door, you want to have the potential to have privacy. But when you have small spaces like this, I like the having the light, having it light and bright. Or also knowing when you're coming or going, not being surprised. So it might be nice to feel it. Now the question is, do you feel safe and secure? 
in feng shui, you know, I posted a picture of a peek through door, meaning there were all these slats the other day with doors and windows. So from an artistic interior design perspective, yeah, it was very fancy, it looked cool, I love the wood, but from a privacy and security perspective, it's probably not the best because somebody could do something and just open the door. So in feng shui, typically you like to have a solid door. Now you could have a storm door in front so that you could have the door or the window or something like that. But again, you know, these are all simple things. You have to look throughout your space and see what the story is it tells. Uh, Karen says, thanks for the info. You make it understandable. Awesome. Uh, Garcia says, excellent inf info. Brenda says, wanting your opinion. This is my front door with glass panels. When you can't see are my, my food dogs on the other side, is there enough protection? Thanks. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring up where all the comments go. I'm going to put a little smiley face. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So if you guys are enjoying these sessions, just hit the thumbs up or the like or the loves. I appreciate you guys. I'm trying to get to everyone's questions and just help you guys get some clarity so that you guys can continue to rock and make things happen. Is it okay to have a TV in the wealth area placed at an angle? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the reality is these days with feng shui, um, sorry, I'm trying to, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I can see everybody's comments. And so I'm having, there we go. Oh, awesome. All right, now I can scroll through better. Okay. All right, that's helpful. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, talked about the wealth corner of the home. I know I was just in the process of, process of answering a question and I got stuck. So if you want, resubmit it or I'll, hopefully I'll see it here in a second. Is it true for a business shop as well? So I'm not sure what that's commenting on, if that's for the windows or the door or what. With a business, you want to have it locked down at night, but during the day, you want people to be able to see into the business. This is a common thing that I see all the time. B businesses just do a smorgasbord of stuff in the windows, and that's okay, but the goal is you want to be able to see in. If a person can see in, then they're encouraged to actually go in. If there's too cluttered or there's just junk all over covering the windows, then people will less likely come into the space. Brenda, I'm coming back to yours, wanting to ask an opinion. This is the front door glass panels. What can you, see? you can't see my foo dogs. So again, you know, the question is, let me see, I'll, uh, there is her door. So in a perfect world, you want to have a solid door. And so that does have a solid door, but the reality is at the same time, if I'm thinking of somebody that wants to get in this space, of course I can just hit it, you know, break the glass and stuff like that. And there are probably even easier ways. Um, the other thing is when you go to answer the door, do you feel safe? Like that's the question. So, you know, normally I always operate from a place of there's always more things that you can do from a cost of effective standpoint than all of a sudden doing major construction. So this might be on the long-term list of maybe you, you know, at some point you can do that. Uh, you can get a new front door that's more solid or more secure or more protective. Now, foo dogs in feng shui, the superstition is, or the remedy is that you can provide foo dogs, one on each side of the door as a door protector. So that's fine, um, you know, but there's the mundane. Do you have a security system? Do you have a camera system? Do you have adequate lighting? Does the landscaping make it look like it's well taken care for or somebody, or is it encouraging a certain vibration or energy where it's attracting people that you don't necessarily want to attract? Um, Patricia, you're so amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Patricia. I'm going to give that a like. 
Is it okay to have, oh, is it okay to have a TV in the wealth area placed at an angle? So again, it has to be functional. You know, a lot of times this day and age, like people use their TVs. So for me, I never, I, I don't hide the TVs or as far as like putting blankets over it or towels over it. People have read that and they're like, oh, and then next thing you know, their place looks like some odd thing is happening because they got towels and they're frustrated. Cause... So it's hard to say without actually seeing it or what's happening. The question is, can you add plant life or something like that around it? Um, Garcia says, my antique home now has the front door walking directly into the living room. Eventually, I'll enclose the front porch, creating a foyer entry way. What to do now? Well, you know, the home is designed in a certain way. So, you know, all too often when people post or look at the pictures I submit, you know, they're like, oh, I would change the flooring, I would, I would move this, I would do that. 99% of the people are not doing major renovations. So although that's nice, you have to figure out what you can do and not on what you can't. So again, you know, that's the way it is. So you want to make it welcoming. You, don't want, to, you want to make sure your front door area is not blocked. A lot of times people put couches, chairs, or bags right in front of the front door. So you want to make sure it's open, clean, and clear. So that's the best thing that you can do. And then you start to look at and understand what do you experience as you walk into the space. So posting a photo or something like that, standing at the front door looking in, would be helpful to review. Uh, Shane or Cheyenne says, is it a good idea to have a gold mirror opposite the fridge and the freezer? Well, gold, gold this, that, and the other, it doesn't matter to me. For the mirror, typically it's... If you're doing it from a feng shui remedy, then no. Like if you're doing it to try to double, you know, the abundance that's in your fridge, probably not. And then a lot of times is gold the right answer? Mm, I don't know. Again, it's, it's what you like and what you enjoy. So, you know, if you're trying to do it from a feng shui remedy, then probably not. Again, you'd look at your space and understand is that space or that area calling for a mirror and would it be helpful? And then what's the size of the mirror and things like that? My shop has two rooms. Is the wealth corner in the first room or through a door in the middle of the wall into the back room? So again, you're looking at the floor plan overall and it's in the back left corner. So more than likely it's gonna be in the back room some, somehow or some way based on what, um, what you're, descri you're describing. But again, you're looking at the entire space. You're not just looking at, because people get fixated on it. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm in so trouble. And then they're operating from fear, self-doubt, and anxiety rather than confidence and certainty. So again, focus on what you can change and not on what you can't. Garcia says, your thoughts on creating an attic into a master bedroom suite. East and west windows, I'll keep it simple. Bed, two nightstands, seating area. I don't know. I don't know my thoughts on creating an attic into a master bedroom suite. You know, there are just so many different combinations. My question would be, do you really need to? And what is that attic look like? Is there drywall or are you looking at exposed beams and like, you know, the, that's just too broad of a question. I, I don't know. What's the heat like? What's the temperature like? How does it feel? Are there actually windows? You know, some of the things you said they're east and west windows. It's, it's hard to say based on just how you're describing it. So Ruth Ann says, sun is blaring in the front business windows. I keep them partially closed to cool down the studio. Wrong. The heat pours through the front glass door and windows. So again, ideally you have some type of, sometimes you can put film or something to help uh, block that radiation. And sometimes you just need some type of covering to help with the, the heat. So, you know, again, you gotta keep it functional. If the studio is just too hot and you're boiling, then you gotta lower the shades. But as soon as the sun goes away from that area, then you wanna open them back up so that people don't feel like, they're like, what am I getting into? What's the store? Things like that. Um, Shen says, I have just won an oval mirror at an auction and my intention is to use it to enlarge the kitchen and dining room. Okay, all right. 
I mean, you, yeah, you can do that. I, I mean, it seems like a statement, not a question. Um, I want to say that I first rediscovered Ken two days before I had a death in my family for the next month. My life was upside down. I finally got to begin again watching Ken's videos and shows and reading the book. To start, I had to declutter, and then I've cleared out a gazillion pounds of 30 years of collection collections. Thank you, Ken. Jan, you're awesome. So great that you got motivated. So again, what she's pointing to, which is all too often the common theme, which is you had a life event that has happened. And then not only does that life event happen, but then usually there are other events that stack on top of it and it completely disrupts and disengages you from what you're able to accomplish. So the goal is what do you need to do to get re-engaged and get your mojo back? Once you do something, then you feel better. When you feel better, you want to do more of it. So for her, she started to gain the momentum and that's how it happens. Now, when I'm working with a client and consulting with them and JP, if she's still on, she knows this. So we did a couple different things to change her perspective and how she looks at her space. Now, all of a sudden, she's in action. She's raised her vibration and frequency, and now she has leapfrogged her space. So now she's pulling her space forward. Before, the space was in front and kind of dictating her energy and stuff like that, and then we did a consultation, and then she jumped it, and then now she's pulling the space forward and looking at it from a completely different perspective, and now she's taking massive action on a lot of things that I didn't necessarily recommend, but she's in motion, and that's the whole goal, getting your spark back, getting the wins, and taking action, and then watching how things come along. Is it okay to have a small mirror on my front door? For me, I don't like to have mirrors on the, on the door because it swings, it's moving, things like that. So for me, I don't usually have a mirror on the door. Uh, the mirror would be on the top wall. Okay. Is it bad to have a built-in bookshelf behind you when sitting at your desk in your office? So this is from Nadine. So the question is, if you already have it, then don't worry about it. You know, again, that's the challenge that people have is they get worried and concerned and then they operate from fear, self-doubt, and anxiety. Oh my gosh, here's the reason why. This is why everything is so bad in my life or... You know, not to say that that's bad. So again, you got to focus on what you can change and not on what you can't. So more than likely, you're not going to rip out the built-in bookcase. What you can do is you can make it nice. You can make it presentable. You can make it so that it's organized. And the shelves that are above your head, you want to make sure that they don't have a lot of weight to them. All too often, people put big, heavy items. I'm looking, I'm looking for things... Um, but I don't have anything in example. But they start putting boxes and crates and stuff like that up right above their head at the office. You know, the cubicles that were very popular for the last 20 years, they'd have the doors right above your head. It wreaks havoc on a person's energy. Like they feel lethargic, they can't focus, they're anxious, they're frustrated. So take a look at and see what's behind you and things like that and then keep it organized. Uh... Garsha says, attic feels great. Putting drywall in now, open ceiling, creating loft effect in the bottom room. Not a heat issue. Western New York, great cross ventilation. Yes, need a master bedroom after downsizing back to New York. 100-year-old home. Uh, borderline linen closets. If there was even a closet. Love your live post. So happy I, I take a break and caught it. Been following YouTube for years. Awesome. So glad. So it sounds like you're already in motion. So whether I say it or not, it sounds like that's already happening uh, as far as changing the attic into a bedroom suite. So if that's the case, then embrace it and go for it and then try to set it up as well as possible. And again, you're saying there's good ventilation and things like that. So just make sure all those key pieces are in a puzzle and make sure that the project is actually completed. <clears throat> when people are doing it themselves or they have contractors or things like that, it gets a lot of, it gets 90% of the way there, but they never quite finish it because they get distracted and doing other things. So make sure that you keep moving things forward. So we'll take a couple more questions. Um, Melinda, I'm coming back to your photos. I'm just opening these up. So Melinda is showing a picture of missing wealth corner. So there's not much. Um, there's not much you can do here, right? So you could put some plants or something 
by that door. Um, and then here's what you're looking out to. Uh, and I guess this is the second floor. So again, you're not doing much. It doesn't look like that's a patio or anything on the second floor. So you're not doing much there. And up, up top, you could put a plant or something there if that's the main area. Or if it's um, the back, you know, you could put a plant or something by the door as long as it's not block, blocking the door. So again, you keep things simple and don't stress about too much. All right. So if we have any other question, questions or comments, I'm going to refresh here, see if anybody else has posted something. Good. So again, guys, thank you so much for being here. Give me some thumbs up or some hearts if this is what you're truly, uh, if you're really enjoying this time and things like that. And what I'm going to leave you with is, you know, helping you set your intentions. So if anybody has another question or something, feel free. I'm going to spend another eight minutes or so here um, making sure that I give you guys plenty of time and uh, helping you guys all move forward. So with feng shui or anything of, of these, these items that you guys are talking about, make sure you understand what is the outcome I desire. Not because somebody told me to put a mirror there or told me to put food dogs there. Like, what is your desired outcome? Because what happens is in feng shui, more people get, a, people get more obsessed with the, with the tool than the outcome. And feng shui can make you crazy. Like, that's why I really wanted to learn it. Because I started to do it, you know, decades ago. And I'd read something and tell me to do one thing. And then I'd read it from somebody else. They'd tell me to do the exact opposite. And it was literally, instead of reducing my anxiety, it actually increased it. So I spent three years studying, learning, and master's training program and, and working with some of the best people in the world. But my approach was always from not just how do I feel better and how do I be in harmony, but what do I need to do to help support my clarity and help me get results? Majority of people that I work with, they're not looking to become a feng shui consultant. And, and as a result, I don't train feng shui. There are plenty of people that will give you you know, you do it for five days, you get a certification, you pay a couple bucks. Like, good for them. And that helps, but, you know, all too often, they're, they're not getting the results. They're hanging stuff, they're putting coins and stuff like that, and then a lot of times people don't even know why, other than the fact of, oh, I want to make more money. But usually it doesn't, you know, if they're lucky, they're finding 20 bucks on the ground, but they're not creating that transformation where, you know, one of my clients went from 2000 a month to 40000 a month within less than four months. Like that's a game changer. That's real. That's measurable. And that's a life that's we're transforming the way that that person experiences life. Or from the massage therapist that's going from 1500 bucks a month to now doing 12 to 14,000 dollars a month. That's a life-changing opportunity. Like that's not and we didn't do it through putting some coins or hanging some lucky charms. So you have to understand out of all the stuff you could be doing, first of all defining what is my outcome? What am I trying to achieve? and then working backwards. So be more obsessed with the outcomes than the tools. And then that also allows you the freedom and flexibility to, to you know, weave together other tools that might be even a better fit. For me, feng shui is a tool. You know, it's the quickest tool I know of at the moment where I can understand what's a person experiencing on a subconscious level so that they don't even have to open their mouth and I can understand exactly what's happening in their life by looking at the patterns and the reflections of how their subconscious experiences their space. And then we change that story to change their life. So focus on what you can change. So Brenda, thanks Ken, great advice, love it. Will painting a main entrance front door red bring luck or wealth? So again, this is part of its you know, superstition and things like that with painting the red door luck or wealth. The question is, do you like a red door? Like that's where you first start. You know, is that something you enjoy? All too often, people start to make their home look like a souvenir shop down in Chinatown. And they get further and further away from their true self and who they truly are and what they really love. So focus on what you love. You know, I, I, over the last 12, 14 years, maybe I've recommended a red door. I don't even know if I've ever recommended a red door. Like, it's not, the, it's not my go-to. It's again, it's what's strengthening you and who you are. So I would first focus on that. And again, focus on what the house is calling for. 
So the way that I work when I'm working with clients is one of two ways. Either the space is calling for something or the occupants are calling for something. Like, that's it. Now, I know enough in feng shui to understand the best practices, but I also know enough over the years that all I have to do is help a person get back to their true self. Like, that's it. That's the recipe. Once you do that, the world opens back up to you. So we get things changing. So the question would be, what's the house calling for and what's true to you? You know, there are some homes where they're, maybe they're all white and the red door just pops and it looks beautiful. But to just say, should I paint the red door? I, I don't have the direct answer for that. And the reality is, what are you trying to solve with the red door? Are there other things that you're trying to solve for, like money, health, wealth, opportunities? And then look at everything else as well. So, Shen says, I took an item and moved it to a more prominent place and felt anxiety. Interesting reaction. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes when you move things around, you, sometimes you try it. You test it. How does it feel? If it feels good, great. If it doesn't, then maybe you need to move it back. Now, the other thing that is trap sometimes is, you know, because there's so much anxiety to begin with that it's frustrating and you just don't know. But a lot of times a piece or an item or a piece of artwork or something like that ha it is calling for a certain area. And sometimes you can take something in a certain area that's not doing well and move it to another area of the home or on a different wall and it completely pops and it looks amazing. So you can look at it and say, is it adding value there or not? So Josette says, what about book open bookshelves? So you can go back to the beginning after the recording and you can see I talked about open bookshelves a little more in detail uh, with the person where they were sitting be, uh, in front of the open bookshelves. So let's see if anyone else has an, one more question or comment or a picture, feel free to submit it. And if not, then we will be wrapping up here in another minute or two. So again, thanks guys for all these questions and comments and um, if you guys have questions in during the week that come up, then, then this is the opportunity for you to ask those questions. Or if you have specific questions, even on your own space that you kind of would like in a, you know, my thoughts or feelings about, then this is your opportunity. And so every Tuesday we do this, just keep in mind next Tuesday, I'm going to be traveling in Europe. So unfortunately the times don't work out. So I will not be here next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, I will be back in the United States, back on time zones, and uh, we can address those things uh, then as well. So thanks so much for being here, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my gifts with you. Um, and this is, I love this opportunity in this forum. So thank you so much for being here. Appreciate all the thumbs up, all the hearts and all of your engagement on Facebook and my YouTube channel and Instagram and my website and things like that. So again, focus on what you can control, not on what you can't. And then out of all the things that you could be doing, just decide what is the next simple step I can take to move things forward. So in the meantime, have a wonderful uh, rest of your day, a wonderful rest of your week. Keep, uh, keep moving forward with clarity. You guys are so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate all of you guys and look forward to talking with you all soon.